Today we're going to be making an air quality and environment monitor that transmits the recorded data wirelessly over a 4G mobile network to a ThingSpeak dashboard. A couple of weeks ago MakerFab sent me their open wind station to try out. It's a compact Arduino compatible device that records temperature, humidity, pressure, wind speed and air quality information and uses a mobile network to transmit the data to a remote database or cloud service. Unfortunately, the built-in A9G chip only works on a 2G mobile network, which has been decommissioned in Australia for a couple of years now. But they have been working on an alternative, the Madduino 04G. This new board uses a more modern SIM 7600 chip, which operates on a 4G network. They say it can reach upload speeds of up to 50 megabits per second and download speeds of up to 150 megabits per second. The best part about this board is that it's a fully programmable Arduino compatible microcontroller with 12 digital I.O. pins, 6 analog inputs and an I2C interface, so it's perfect for projects that require data to be sent to or from a remote location. You can set this up anywhere you have 4G coverage and have full control of it from an internet connected device. I'll leave a link to the MakerFab's product page if you'd like to get your own. I thought it would be a good idea to take the wind and air quality sensor from the open wind station and integrate these with the new Madduino 04G board. I'm also going to add some additional Grove DHT11 and BMP280 sensors to create a truly wireless air quality and environment monitor. The Grove sensors already have the supporting electronics built into them, so they just have a 3 or 4 wire interface to the Arduino. To start we need to add some pin headers to the Madduino board so that we can plug in our own sensors. The board comes with male pins, but I'd prefer to use female pins so that there are fewer exposed pins within the case when it's complete. I'm going to do a trial assembly of the components on a breadboard to start, because the original sensors operate on 5 volts, while the Madduino 4G operates on 3.3 volts, so there's a good chance that they won't even work with it. I've connected the sensors to the same pins that they were connected to on the open wind station, so that the original code doesn't need to be completely rewritten for the new system. I'll leave a link to the detailed setup in the video description if you'd like to make your own. Now we just need to add our SIM card to the tray at the back and plug in the three antennas into the connectors on the front. So we've got it all assembled, now we just need to program it. I've created a sketch using two example sets of code, one being the 4G example code that MakerFabs have put together for the Madduino 04G, and the other being the original code for the open wind station. This has the calculations and settings for the sensors, although I suspect that they may need to be recalibrated at some stage, as the change in cycle time will change the wind speed calculation, and the lower voltage probably affects the brightness of the air quality sensor's LED and its analog output. In any case, the sketch seems to run ok on the breadboard setup, and I'm able to see some values from the sensors, so that looks promising. I created a new ThingSpeak channel with its own API key, which I'm going to need to copy into the sketch. This allows the Arduino to write the data to the ThingSpeak channel, and it can then be accessed through any internet connected browser. Now that we've got the electronics working, we need something to mount it in. So I'm going to use Tinkercad to design a case to hold the board and sensors, which can then be mounted onto a 25mm pole. The case consists of three parts, the main body, a cover plate and a bracket that's bolted onto the back to mount it onto the pole. This bracket uses a small M3 by 12mm screw to lock it into place on the pole. This is done by pressing against an M3 nut on the inside. The board is held in place with some M2 screws, and the sensors and components fit in around it. 
I was initially going to add the original battery, but it's only a thousand milliamp hours, and I suspect this 4G board is going to draw a lot more power than the original one. So this probably won't provide much benefit. I'll instead use a USB cable to power it from a 30,000 milliamp hour power bank. I'm going to be using this in a partially covered area, so it doesn't need to be rainproof, but I designed a couple of vent covers just in case it does get a bit wet if there's a lot of wind. The anemometer is mounted onto the end of the pole using a 3D printed bracket, and we can then slide the main control board onto the pole underneath it. The anemometer is then just plugged in using this 4-pin connector. I decided to test the power consumption to see how long it would last on my power bank. My USB power meter showed that it used around half an amp fairly consistently, so my 30,000 mAh power bank should power it for about 40 hours. If you're going to be using it for a longer period of time, then you'll probably need to use a mains adapter or solar power to keep it running. Let's get it mounted outside and start recording some data. After a few hours, it looks like we're consistently getting data from all of the sensors. The air quality reading definitely looks a bit higher than what I would expect, so I'll probably need to work on calibrating that. The wind speed looks about right when I compare it to my other anemometer. Let me know what you think of the Madduino 04G in the comment section. Do you have any project ideas for a 4G Arduino? Speaking of other ideas, you can actually use this to provide a 4G internet connection to your computer or Raspberry Pi, and you can use it as a fully functional mobile phone to make calls as well. Thanks for watching. Please remember to like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe for more tech and electronics projects, tutorials, and reviews.